Now, the average Briton pays about £5,000 a year in tax towards the NHS. That figure is about to rise as national insurance contributions go up to help the health service deal with its COVID backlog. Discussed that a few moments ago with Peter Lilly. Most of us don't begrudge that, but from time to time, a story emerges that makes taxpayers question whether every one of the NHS's 1.3 million employees represents good value for money. Take the NHS Leadership Academy. It prepares NHS workers for more senior senior roles, of which there are many, in an organisation which employs more people than any other organisation in Europe. The Leadership Academy has published a blog by an NHS equality boss. The blog is addressed to, quote, dear white people in the UK, close quotes, but given its context, seems to be addressed to NHS staff more broadly, who it urges to embrace five principles, and its wording gives us an insight into the Kafkaesque world of critical race theory. Uh, let's have a look at what's been proposed. Uh, don't be defensive, it says. This isn't really about you. Don't try to avoid talking politics. Quote, ignorance is not an excuse. Keeping your thoughts to yourself is not an option, it seems. Be open to the so-called lived experiences of ethnic minority colleagues, but only if they choose to talk about them. And finally, be uncomfortable about your white skin, although you're not permitted to be defensive about it, see Point one, it all loops back together, or is it just loopy? Let's turn to the deputy editor of Spiked, Tom Slater, who's written about this today. Tom, thanks for joining us this evening. Um, I, we, it's easy to be, as I probably just was, a, a little bit flippant, frivolous about this. <laughs> at one level, well, uh, at one level, it's it's deadly serious. This is this is, if this is a message that's been uh, shared, disseminated widely to a huge organisation like the NHS then it's literally hundreds of thousands of people who have been told how to think. Well, this is exactly it. This is the problem with wokeness more broadly, is that it can often look very ridiculous. This blog, if you read it, is ridiculous. It's regurgitating um, a lot of the kind of usual slogans, but not even doing it particularly well. But if you actually look at the content of it, it's also utterly odious. I mean, I think you can boil it down to two points. The first is which that people should think Racially, that's really what it's saying. I mean, at one point, she even laments the fact that white people do not see themselves in racial terms. Last time I checked, that's actually quite a dangerous thing to encourage white people to think of themselves as a distinct group of people with interests all their own. It's not a good road to go down. Well, isn't, isn't that the other happening, point, Tom? Just to, sorry, sorry to interrupt your flow, but isn't that what... A whole generation of people are, sen are being sensitised to something that they weren't hitherto mm -hmm. sensitised to. Well, this is exactly it. You see it in that uh, final line, be uncomfortable. And the whole trajectory of anti-racism previously, I don't think this is anti-racism, I think this is something very, very different, was to make people feel more comfortable around one another, for race really not to be an issue for something which is ultimately just incidental. We might notice it, but it's not an issue. Yeah. And this is pushing in exactly the opposite direction. The other thing that it does, which you've also highlighted, is it basically says if you disagree with what you're hearing, you've got to shut up. And that is also incredibly odious. It dresses this up as saying you shouldn't duck the issue by saying um, I'm not political. But this is ultimately political. It's about pushing a form of identity politics. It has nothing to do with anti-racism. And saying that if you have the temerity to say I disagree, then you are de facto racist or it's certainly not sufficiently anti-racist in the current lingo. So, yes, all of this can look quite ridiculous. This blog is ridiculous, but some very odious ideas contained within it, which is being pushed on um, future NHS leaders. Well, on that point, I mean, there'll be people saying, well, hang on, you two, stop it. I mean, it's not that serious. <laughs> the NHS has got more, more pressing matters to attend to right now. This is, it's just a blog. It's just a blog on a website. Um, it's not a course. It's not actually affecting real people on wards doing the important business that the NHS goes about. I mean, you definitely can go too far down that direction. You know, Sir John Hay is writing to um, the health secretary today saying what is going to be done about this blog. It can slip into a slightly hysterical McCarthy type thing if we're not careful. But at the same time, we all know that this is more widespread. I mean, the big viral um, NHS woke scandal of last week was the fact that there were all these job ads going out for £75,000 a year in some cases for equality and diversity managers. I mean, this is absurd. And we all know what this is about. The NHS is incredibly diverse. It doesn't need any help where that's concerned. We all know that these positions are about pushing this kind of workplace politics, pushing this new racialism. So yes, you know, we shouldn't overreact. But at the same time, we all know that the other side of this argument is not being aired on these kinds of blog sites. We all know that someone of a 
perspective such as ours say is not being heard in relation to this discussion and that's the problem that we've got to root out and the thing is tom i mean you can imagine if this was the other way around uh, the hue and cry that would follow and the demands for the individual concern to the equalities officer who posted this blog to be sacked how dare Mm. this be a use of our taxpayers money you you can hear those arguments being you can hear that axe being ground can't you at least theoretically well, the thing I always go back to is the response to the Tony Sewell report into racial disparities and the question of systemic racism. I mean, that was ultimately a contribution to this debate which pushed against all of the prevailing narrative that we hear about. And all of the commissioners of that report were basically labelled Uncle Tom's. Um, there were letters signed saying that the report should be completely dismissed by the government, calling their credibility into question. And it just shows you that this world of equality, diversity and in inclusion is incredibly exclusive when it comes to anyone who even lightly tries to challenge those points. So we all know if someone, if the shoe was on the other foot, as you say, the reaction would have been much, you know, much more outrage, if anything, and to the end of not challenging this perspective, but just getting people sacked, because that's always what seems to happen. Um, let's move on to something even more comical. The Booker Prize winning novelist Dame Hilary Mantel has said she's applying for an Irish passport so she can, quote, feel European again. Uh, Mantel, who wrote the best selling Wolf Hall trilogy, described Brexit voters as, quote, callow opportunists, insincere, devious, and often ridiculous. She made the remarks in an interview with the Italian newspaper La Repubblica. The 69 year old said she was especially ashamed of Britain over its treatment of migrants. Mantel was made a dame of the British Empire. Empire, coincidentally, in 2014. Sorry, Tom, it was worth making that point, wasn't it, I think? No, definitely. I mean, you know, if she's, she makes a point, actually, of saying that she's particularly irritated by the fact that the persistence of the monarchy and the, the fact that people are willing to go along with it. So, yes, a ridiculous, obvious hypocrisy there. I'm just always struck with these stories because this isn't the first I'm leaving Britain because of Brexit celebrity story. Oftentimes they don't actually end up leaving, but Jamie Oliver has said similar things before. Emma Thompson actually did leave for Venice for a couple of weeks and she came back <laughs> when the coronavirus hit Italy. So it is a bit of a trend. And I'm always just struck in these stories by what a privilege it is to loathe your own country. I mean, if you are so wealthy to the point where just an election doesn't go your way you're so irritated by having to share a nation with people who happen to disagree with you that you can just happily up sticks and leave this is not within the ken of most people so i think there's a petulance to these kinds of um, statements definitely but it also just shows what a privileged position they happen to be in that they can even contemplate doing something this ridiculous tom good of you to join us tonight really appreciate it tom slater there from spiked online Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.